This is the question now. Where we did divisibility proofs yesterday. Um, I didn't do a question like this because um, it is extraordinarily unlikely that you will encounter a question like this just because it's mean. It's so mean. But it's totally doable, which is why I want to do it with you now. And I've got just about 10 minutes. I reckon we can handle it. Okay? So think back to what it means to do a divisibility proof. You've got something, you want to show that it can be divided by something else evenly. However, what we're looking at here is quite different to what we had before. This is not a number. It's a function. It's a polynomial, in fact. And we're showing that it's divisible by some other polynomial, namely that linear one, x minus 1. Okay? So a lot of this will be similar, like the overall structure of an induction proof. But a couple of other little things will be different because it's not numerical division, it's polynomial division. So. Let's quickly go through the normal steps that we go through with induction. You've got your first value of n for which this is suitable, which is um, you can test n equals 2. So when you have a go at that, you would say, well, the left, uh, well, x to the n minus 1 will be x squared minus 1. To show that it's divisible, you factorize. Factorization, divisibility, we know these go hand in hand. So this is just difference of squares. I apologize, I'm just going to give you the quick version rather than talk through every point. Have I shown that this is divisible by x minus 1? And the answer is yes. Uh, this thing over here is a factor, and so even though it's not a number, like in um, uh, numerical divisibility, that's it. I can say this guy is divisible by x minus 1. I can make it super clear by saying, look, it's x minus 1 times some other polynomial. Do you remember this when we were doing factor theorem, remainder theorem, all that? So um, therefore, I'm done. Okay. I'm now going to do the assumptions, so um, it's going to be x to the k minus 1. Now, I'm going to jump on this line that I just wrote here. If it's x to the k minus 1 really is divisible by x minus 1, I should be able to write it in the same form as what I had before, right? Namely, x minus 1 times some other polynomial. I'm going to call this one q, right? So. This is my assumption where Q is a polynomial. I suppose I should write that. Please note, Q is just a stand-in for a whole polynomial. That's why I write Q of X. What am I trying to prove off of this? Well, I want the next step over, the X to the K plus 1 step. I want to show that it's divisible as well, X minus 1 times, well, again, it's a different polynomial. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to call it R. Okay. Now, rewinding back to divisibility proofs, I'm just going to have a look at this left-hand side. Here comes the proof. I'm going to look at this left-hand side, and I'm going to try and twist and turn it so that it looks like my assumption. right? And it doesn't take too much, even though it looks really different to what we've been doing numerically. This is the left-hand side. I notice that in this x to the k plus 1, hidden inside there is an x to the k, right? I only have to do one thing to sort of tease it out. It's x times x to the k. Are you all right with that? That's what the plus 1 means in the index. And then there's a minus 1 hanging out on the side, okay? Now, this is good. This is progress. I've got an x to the k, but I actually don't have an x to the k by itself. I have an x to the k minus 1. Okay? Now, look at this with me, right? If, in fact, I want this to be x to the k minus 1, if I subtract 1 from that, because there's an x out the side here, what I've actually subtracted from this line is x. Do you agree with that? I've the difference between this and this is I've subtracted x, which means that in order to keep this all nice and balanced, right, I've got to add x to compensate. Are you okay with that? So here is the subtraction of x, and here is the addition of x, so everything is balanced. I'm back in equation land where everything has to stay exactly the same. And that minus 1 still hanging out on the side. Okay. Now, what am I trying to show? I'm trying to show that x minus 1 is a factor of the whole thing, right? I've already got something really nice, which I noticed, I'm going to highlight in another color, which is look on the right hand side. What has just emerged that I'm interested in for this particular proof? X minus 1. Look at that. Bam. Right there. That part's divisible by x minus 1. Yippee. 
how do I deal with this? What am I going to use? It's a proof by induction, right? What's the main thing that makes proof by induction special that's unique? It's the assumption, which I haven't used yet, right? So I'm going to say that my assumption is that this thing is writable in this form. x minus 1 times a polynomial by assumption. I'm pretty much there, right? What I want to end up with is x minus 1 times a polynomial, and I can see there's an x minus 1 here, and an x minus 1 there. So I can take that out as a common factor. What does it leave me with on the inside? It looks like I've got x times q of x, whatever that happens to be, plus what's left over on the end? Just, just a 1. Now, I don't know what any of this is, but when you multiply a polynomial by x, it's another polynomial, right? If you have a polynomial and you add one, it's still a polynomial, so I'm done. This is my x minus one times a polynomial, and that's just the one it happens to be, okay? So you could finish off the rest of it. It does look a bit different, but it's totally within reach, just if you remember back to the stuff you did with polynomials last year, okay?